Hi and welcome to the vlog. I am Tova, this is Parent XP, and the vlog you have clicked on is a little bit different to my usual vlogs. I was asked if I was willing to sit down with a med student and talk about my daughter, my disabled daughter. And I then asked her if she was willing to let me film it for the vlog and she very graciously said yes, uh, which I'm super happy about. And so I filmed our conversation. And uh, it's not the greatest camera angle, I have to admit. Uh, and I'm, I'm almost with my back towards the camera the whole time. And you'll, you're gonna have to forgive me for that. But we were filming in a special needs school and you have to be really careful what is visible on camera, just in case they've left something confidential up on the walls or lying around or anything like that. So I was a bit limited, I'm sorry. Um, yes, but that's anyway what this vlog is about is I am sitting down and I am talking to this woman who has just finished her second year studying to become a doctor and wanting to become a paediatrician and I'm telling her about Eileen, Eileen's birth, uh, what happened and how that resulted in Eileen's disabilities, what her needs are now and um, how all of that impacts her but also how it impacts myself and Alice. It's a long vlog. As I'm sure you are aware by now, once I start speaking, uh, it's getting me to shut up, that's the problem. So it is a long vlog, even if I have cut down a lot of us oming and eyeing, uh, but it is, you have our whole conversation in there. Everything that I told her and that we talked about. I'm trying to, put it into chapters so that it's easier for you to go to an area that interests you in it but you know if you are interested in what it's like parenting a disabled child having a disabled baby then just watch the whole thing anyway if you're still with me and if you're choosing to continue watching this vlog i am so grateful it's lovely to have you with me please hit the subscribe button and share my vlogs to anyone that you think may be interested in them let's go in my second year just finished second year of medicine yeah so our like patient experience for this year is allied healthcare professionals with like helping with disabilities and then a charity placement this summer so we have to kind of write up this a coursework thing so if it's is it all right with you if I like use details about your daughter, but obviously nothing identifiable or anonymous yeah. um, for this coursework? Is that fine yes, with you? Yes, absolutely okay. fine. Right. Absolutely. So you studying to become a doctor? Yeah. Fantastic. <laughs> and are you thinking about paediatrics or? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, it's definitely up there. For cool. Me. Yeah. Um, so yeah, you absolutely have my permission to use everything we talk about. Great. Okay. Thank you so much. Um, and do you mind if I just take notes while? Please do. Okay, through. Thank you. Like, first of all, would you mind just kind of telling me about, is it Alice? Eileen. Ellen, sorry. Yeah, Alice is her little sister. Okay, sorry, yeah. I thought, got confused. Yeah, Eileen, E-L-I-N. E-L-I-N. So, would you mind just kind of giving me an oh, overview yeah. of, like, her disability and just... I don't know, everything yes. you want to tell me about that, basically. This. <laughs> everything I spew out <laughs> at the start of every hospital appointment, <laughs> definitely. Um, Eileen was a full-term baby. Mm -hmm. As far as the baby oh, concerned, a healthy pregnancy. Yes, and I didn't go into labour, mm -hmm. but the baby stopped moving. Okay. The end result of that was an emergency C-section with uh, meconium aspiration and a APGAR score of one. And a what, sorry? APGAR score of one. Not sure I know what that is. Uh, APGAR <laughs> scores is what they give babies at birth. An APGAR score of 10 is a perfectly healthy baby. Okay. An APGAR score of one, um, chances of survival are extremely low. Okay. The meconium in her lungs caused pulmonary hypertension, mm. uh, which is when the pressure in the lungs is higher than the blood pressure in the rest of her body. Mm -hmm. uh, so even though they got her breathing, she had at least 10 minutes without oxygen and suffered severe brain damage as a result. Mm -hmm. uh, she has, the official diagnosis is grade two hypoxic ischemic encephalopathy, which okay. I'm gonna just Let tell. Me. The vlog means oxygen deprivation brain damage, literally what that means. So let me make sure I've got the right, grade two hypoxic ischemic encephalopathy, H-I-E. Yeah. At 12 hours old, the pressure in her lungs deteriorated again. Mm -hmm. 
and she was born at Stevenage Hospital uh, and the NICU there were not able to keep her stable mm -hmm. so they called in Luton and it took two ambulance crews 12 hours with nitric oxide to stabilize her enough to dare to move her and then she was rush, rushed to Luton which is one of the best NICU units in this country uh, and she spent six days sedated she was having seizures, she wasn't breathing on her own, she was on ventilation. At four days old, they did an MRI scan to decide whether or not to turn off the life support. Mm -hmm. And at that point, she started breathing on her own. And when my girl fights, she fights. <laughs> so when she was six days old, she woke up, she started breastfeeding. At 12 days old, we were back at Stevenage. Two weeks old, we went home. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I have never heard of a baby like Eileen not being in hospital for months. Mm -hmm. So two weeks, I don't know how she did that. Uh, and then throughout Eileen's life, she has gone into what we used to call Eileenitis, but we now know our seizures. Mm -hmm. But four or five times a year, she was in hospital with a pulse that was at least double what it should be and chucking her guts up. And we had no idea why. So a lot about Ellen we have learned over time. Mm -hmm. um, the kinds of brain injuries Ellen was born with, the likelihood of ending up with a cerebral palsy diagnosis is very, very high. Mm -hmm. We knew she was going to end up with a CP diagnosis from when she was a few weeks old because she kept her legs straight and she was scissoring. Mm -hmm. And that's a very clear sign of CP in babies. Uh, and then as she's been growing up, we've been learning more and more and more about her. Mm -hmm. So Eileen is quadriplegic. She has very little control over any of her limbs. Cerebral palsy with high tone. So she's always stiff. She's always fired on. Mm -hmm. Finds it very, very hard to relax. She has more movement in her legs than in her arms. And she's got reasonable control of her head. So we use, sometimes we use uh, communication buttons mm -hmm. for her to kind of indicate that she wants attention or take her turn in games and things like that because she can actually control somewhat her head okay. movements not well but somewhat mm -hmm. she does have seizures uh, I learned in hindsight that she had infantile spasms mm -hmm. I was never told this but I've seen them later and gone Eileen did that mm -hmm. uh, she now has tonic-clonic seizures, partial focal seizures, and absent seizures. And they are still very poorly controlled. We are in the process right now, working with her neurologist, building up a body of evidence to see how we can change her current treatment protocol and mm -hmm. what else we can do, what else we can try. Um, she then goes into cluster seizures, and these cluster seizures are medicine resistant. Okay. So when she does that, she is basically fitting one minute off, one minute on, one minute off, one minute on, and every seizure makes her throw up. And when she's emptied her stomach, the only thing that she can throw up is blood because she's torn everything inside. And she vomits almost every day, so there's, she, her whole gastric system is out of sync mm -hmm. with her. She has uh, gastric reflux, obviously. In terms of... All of her digestion system, she's on laxatives every day. And as I say, she throws up pretty much every day. Uh, and I think the best explanation I've had of this, and it's a, really <coughs> yeah, it's a really frustrating explanation, but basically there's an awful lot of muscles that have to work in the right order mm -hmm. and in the right direction from food to go here to coming out the other end. Mm -hmm. And Eileen has brain damage in all the areas of her brain that control muscle movements. So that's why things aren't going as they should. Mm -hmm. It's a frustrating diagnosis because it doesn't, it's actually nothing. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, it explains so well why her system isn't working. Mm -hmm. uh, she is registered blind. There's nothing wrong with her eyes, but she's got damage to all the parts of her brain that control uh, vision input mm -hmm. or process vision input. One of her optic nerves is the wrong color. So we know that the signals from one eye don't go as they should. Mm -hmm. Her eyes move independent of each other. They can point in all kinds of directions. Uh, and at the same time, we know she sees things. Mm -hmm. So if you're up close to her, she can focus on your face. 
So roughly, roughly this distance, she can see. Okay. Unless it's tree branches. Really? If it's green, she will look at it. Mm -hmm. And it can be far away. Green as a color calms her down. Mm. Uh, she loves music. And she can respond to music with her entire little being, just quiver with joy when people sing to her or she hears music. Mm -hmm. She doesn't speak, she's non-verbal, but she does giggle and she vocalises. Mm -hmm. So she'll go, nah. I'm very often in tune with music. <laughs> so if there's music playing, she'll pick a pitch mm -hmm. to go with it, which is really cool, actually. Mm -hmm. We ask her questions and it's quite... Simple questions, but Eileen, are you hungry? And if she smiles, that's a yes. Or mm. she'll start going to indicate that, yeah, I am hungry. Mm -hmm. um, if she ignores you, the answer is no. But I'm yeah, going to start doing that, just ignoring <laughs> you. <laughs> <laughs> and then just smile at them happily if yeah. the answer is yes. <laughs> Did you want to speak to me? <laughs> she has the best smile in the business. Mm -hmm. um, and then, yeah, there's so much we don't know. Mm -hmm. So much we don't know. She can scream for hours and we have no idea why. Mm -hmm. um, but we think it's pain. We don't know what triggers the seizures, but she's had a few days um, when it was really hot last week, mm -hmm. she was really struggling. And then she wasn't opening her bowels regularly and she was really struggling. And we just we don't know. Mm -hmm. We don't know what triggers these spirals of clusters that she goes into, but... Very often, a blood test will show high infection markers, so maybe she's fighting something. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Shall we get back to your questions? Because I've just kind of no, that, that was verbally perfect. vomited Thank at you. you now for a long time. No, that was absolutely perfect. Thank you. Well, this maybe is not... This is maybe more of a question for, like, the patient. Um, I'll try and answer for her as sure. well as I can. <laughs> um, well, so it, it says, like, what... Well, okay, it says, what what would the patient's concerns, but I think you apply it to the parents. I mean, obviously, you're still kind of learning new things, but, like, yeah. I'm, I'm assuming it was, like, really scary when she was first born and it stuff. It was what terrifying. Was, yeah. Yeah, it was absolutely terrifying. We had, we had no idea. Mm -hmm. uh, as I say, it was a healthy pregnancy. Um, I live with a thyroid disorder, so I was consultant-led and hyper-monitored. Mm -hmm. um, now... Healthy pregnancy is from the baby's point of view. I had a horrible pregnancy, mm. but I think nine ultrasounds mm -hmm. throughout the entire pregnancy. Uh, so, you know, they kept doing growth scans and all of that kind of stuff. So it was completely unexpected. Mm -hmm. uh, it's all birth injuries. And then you're sort of standing there with yeah, a two week old disabled baby going home and you have no machines telling you that she's breathing and that she's alive, yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. which is very, very frightening. Yeah. And then you have to learn a completely new way of life. Mm -hmm. um, and you have challenges you could not imagine. And we, obviously, as a baby, we had no idea how severely affected she was going to be. Because mm -hmm. you don't. Uh, we were told quite early on in her life that by the time she's five, you'll have a reasonable picture. But okay. it, it grows. <coughs> and, and actually, I don't even think, you know, it's not like five years old, we knew. Mm -hmm. Um, because at five years old, we still didn't have a clear picture of her seizures. We still don't, and she's 11. Mm -hmm. So it, it really is, you learn all the time as you go. Mm -hmm. uh, she was a difficult baby. She screamed for two years. Mm -hmm. And she slept in 25-minute intervals with her nose in my armpit. <laughs> there was a point where if I got four hours sleep, I could take over the world. <laughs> because four hours was amazing. <laughs> um, we couldn't lay her down, mm -hmm. um, and um, Eileen's never lost her moral reflex, you know, the newborn falling reflex. If mm -hmm. you take a newborn baby and you kind of quickly lay the baby down on the back, they will flinch like that. Eileen still has that. Mm -hmm. uh, so if you lay your Eileen on her back, she will start spasming, and these spasms will trigger seizures. Mm -hmm. So I had that yesterday. I had to lay her down in the wheelchair van to change her pad. Yeah, doubly incontinent as well. Mm -hmm. Um, and as soon as I laid her down, she went into a massive tonic-clonic. And of course, I couldn't move her out of that position because she was like this. Mm -hmm. And I also needed to clean up her pad. <laughs> yeah, so that's scary. It's scary not knowing. It's scary every time you have to go into hospital mm. um, with her. 
Uh, and one thing that I say a lot to people is that having a disabled child is a trauma. Mm -hmm. And then you live with PTSD and you are triggered on a daily basis. So, you know, every complex needs parent has complex continuing PTSD. Mm -hmm. um, and everybody deals with it different, of course. Uh, I find that whenever Ellen goes into hospital, so when she's in crisis, I am the calmest mm -hmm. and most organized person on the planet. And I've made jokes that I'm standing by her hospital bed with a suction in one hand, oxygen mask in the other, mm -hmm. my phone tracking seizures in my third hand and a coffee in my fourth <laughs> because I'm going to be up for 48 hours. Mm -hmm. um, and, and that's not an exaggeration. Mm -hmm. And I know what, she's, what medicines she's had and when. I know how many seizures she's had and when. I know when she last opened her bowel. I know when she last did this, last did that, blah, blah, mm -hmm. blah, blah, blah. And then she gets well after a few days and she comes home and my brain trickles out of my ears and I'm completely useless for at least 24 hours. Mm -hmm. Because that's when my PTSD response kicks in. Mm -hmm. And with like all of this, what, what was, like did you have support from any like, I don't know, team or anything? Or? Yeah, we did, we did. We had, um, we had some brilliant doctors when she was in NICU. We had an awful doctor in NICU. Mm -hmm. A woman looked at us and said, if she survives, she's not going to have any quality of life. I mean. Uh, don't ever say that. No. <laughs> uh, after that, we had another doctor there who sat us down and he said, what she gets out of life is what you put into it. Yes, she has brain damage. Yes, she's going to be disabled. That doesn't mean that she won't have any quality. Mm -hmm. It's all about what you give her. This is very good learning for me mm. of what not to do <laughs> and what to do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and then <coughs> she was uh, taken into, oh God, what is it called? I think it's called early intervention. So um, the Child Development Centre, which is based here, uh, she's been with them since she was three months old with physiotherapy, occupational health therapy, speech and language therapy, vision impairment therapy, um, so she has a really good team in the community here who have always supported us. Mm -hmm. um, we got in with uh, Carers Bedford quite early on, mm -hmm. but we lived in Biggleswade at the time. And Carers Bedford Biggleswade is very much about carers of elderly. Okay. And we did not feel supported by them. There was another charity, and I can't remember what it's called now, which is a real shame, but they basically gave us a grandma. Mm. Uh, so a lady who came in once a week and was sort of an extra adult and just to give a bit of extra help and mm -hmm. support because when you have a baby who will not be laid down mm. <laughs> you're, ver <laughs> you're very tied to what you can do <laughs> yeah. I mean baby wearing is all very well and good but then you have a baby here whilst you're trying to do mm -hmm. things um, so that was, that was really good that was really that. good yeah and because I'm Swedish, my whole family is in Sweden, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, the girl's dad, uh, all of his family is up in Yorkshire. Okay. So we had no one. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we found Embrace, which is uh, the charity um, that Rose is with now, and that Elin is doing play skin with right mm -hmm. now. And that's when we found our village. Mm -hmm. That's when we got to know other special needs parents, and we got real support, real help. Mm -hmm. Um, Embrace do, I mean, apart from the play schemes, uh, they've done family support for us. So we have a spare granny through Embrace who's been with us for many, many years now. Mm -hmm. There have been times when somebody from Embrace has come around and just helped me wash up and do laundry because I'm drowning. Mm. Um, they've helped with fundraising for equipment. I have a fight with social services at the moment because mm -hmm. apparently Erlin only needs 10 hours care a week. Okay. Uh, so they've provided me with a parent advocate okay. from here. Um, not that I've done much because life and time and being in the right headspace are important things. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, Embrace really is the main place. Mm -hmm. And we've gotten to know just all these other fantastic families, children mm -hmm. who are like Eileen but who are a few years ahead of her mm -hmm. and we can lean on them and find out what we've got to expect and then we're paying it forwards because obviously we get new ones who are a few years younger than Eileen. Mm -hmm. We have a lovely um, 
series of girls who are almost identical in their ways mm -hmm. and they don't have exactly the same diagnoses um, but they're so similar mm -hmm. and there's even like there's a winter wheelchair leg cover that has gone from one to another to Ellie really? to another <laughs> to another <laughs> uh, and we also get to meet other special needs siblings which mm -hmm. is fantastic because mm -hmm. Ellen has a younger sister yeah I was gonna ask actually later but it has kind of been like with the having a sister as well and yeah if you could tell me about yeah that. yeah absolutely so uh terrifying <laughs> um planned mm -hmm. uh, both of my children are IVF babies so they're not they're not accidents mm -hmm. um sorry how old is the sister? Alice is seven okay um I'm 47 years old now mm -hmm. uh, and dad is 50 something I can't can't remember um oh well, dad and I have split up as well so mm -hmm. we we co-parent now okay. Because we're not exactly spring chickens. We wanted to have somebody who could be willing to advocate for Eileen when we are gone, if Eileen's not gone before us. Mm -hmm. um, and we wanted another baby. And it was wonderful to experience normal. Uh, and it was super scary being pregnant again, knowing everything that can go wrong. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, it healed so much. Because... I've kept second guessing myself. Mm. Did I do the right things? Should I have gone into hospital earlier? Should I have known? Should I have understood? Should I have done this? Should I have done that? Mm -hmm. And then I had another baby and my waters broke. And I know my waters broke. Mm -hmm. And I went into labor mm -hmm. and I progressed in labor. And that's a completely different thing. Because mm. with Eileen, I didn't know any of this and I didn't even go into labor. Mm. And now I have a fantastic seven-year-old who looks after her sister, mm. who will be there when Ellen's having seizures. She'll be there, she'll hold her, she'll go, you're okay, you're fine. She'll check and see if she's coming out of the seizures, how she's reacting. Mm -hmm. She'll change pads, she'll entertain her sister. She will, under strong supervision, I might add, give medicines. Mm -hmm. uh, she'll feed her. Yeah, she's amazing. Mm. She's cooking breakfast for me. <laughs> I can barely do that at my age. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so she's super. Mm -hmm. I'm going to give myself a little mental reminder. I want to tell you about one of the doctors we encountered during Ellen's seizures oh, later. Tell me. No, tell oh, me. Shall now. I tell That's, you now? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, whenever Ellen's in hospital, it's super frustrating mm -hmm. because we have this amazing team of nurses who are there, and then a doctor will come in and go, What's going on? Well, we don't know. We think she's having seizures, but we don't know if these are seizures. The doctor will look at her and go, well, I don't know either because that doesn't look normal. And then they'll walk out again. Mm. Uh, and, you know, you have somebody who's popping in for two minutes, going again. Popping in for two minutes, going again. And a few months ago, Ellen went into another one of her cluster spirals. And a doctor spent an hour and a half in her room. Mm -hmm. He stood there for an hour and a half. He observed everything going on. And he went... These are not typical seizures, but I will accept that they're atypical seizures. I can see what's happening. I can see on the monitor that her breathing rate goes up. I can see that her heart rate goes up. I can see that she's trembling. There's a current going through her body. Mm -hmm. I see all of these things and then it stops and then she throws up. Right, let's try this medicine. Nothing's, it's not working. She's not stopping. They're continuing with the same frequency. Mm -hmm. Let's try this medicine. Not working. And it just went through it all until we found something that stuck. And it was fantastic. And it's mm. the first time a doctor at a pediatric ward when we've been in, in one of these situations has ever done that. Mm -hmm. And I honestly, I, I'll, I'll tie him up and drag him down to the town hall and marry him today. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because with the special needs kiddos, they are never going to be textbook. Yeah. You can, you can learn everything there is to learn about tonic clonic seizures and then you meet Ellen and you're going I have no clue what's going on here <laughs> yeah the worst thing is her seizures don't show up on EEGs really yeah so we don't actually know that she has seizures mm -hmm. really we have videos and we have obviously tracked how she responds and what's happening but we don't know that they are seizures mm -hmm. and we don't know how to treat them so yeah, with that doctor who spent an hour and a half, we got a lot of answers. Mm. We now know that phenobarb is the one medicine she responds to. So now we're working with her neurologist to change her whole treatment. Okay. Because she's, she was on 
sodium valproate and levetiracetam mm -hmm. every day. We've taken the levetiracetam off completely. Mm -hmm. Yes, hashish has have increased since we've done that, but we want to try something different. Mm -hmm. I'm also really pleased with this because levetiracetam is one that's known to cause quite difficult mood swings in puberty. Mm -hmm. Not always, but it's quite likely, and she's heading that way, so something different, yeah, mm. might be a good idea. <laughs> um, and then she has Clobazam as her first step rescue medicine, so if her seizures pick up pace, we give Clobazam, mm -hmm. and then she has Bocal Midazolam as her second step. And if we get them on time, she responds to that, but if we don't, and they go into the medicine resistant, mm. she currently has a template treatment plan. So that means bocal midazolam, her seizures continue. Mm -hmm. Lorazepam, the seizures continue. We do kephra loading, the seizures continue. Mm -hmm. We do uh, paraldehyde, the seizures continue. We do phenobarb, she sleeps for 36 hours and she's fine. Okay. But that's an awful lot of medicines to give in five hours. Yeah. <laughs> and so what the neurologist wants to do is just scrap everything before phenobarb. Mm -hmm. She's like, there's no point giving it. If she doesn't respond, we don't give it. And then she went, did you know you can have phenobarb as a rescue medicine at home? Mm -hmm. No, I did not. <laughs> um, and, and this is all in progress. Mm -hmm. So me and dad are currently tracking everything. Mm -hmm. uh, so we're taking videos. And then we have this lovely thing. So we have a seizure tracker. Mm -hmm. And you can see here how many she has in a day. So it's cut like more than 10 a day. Yeah, easily. Yeah. I called the ambulance once because I needed to get her blue lighted into hospital. Mm -hmm. And the lovely ambulance crew turns up and they go, so how many seizures has she had today? And I go, well, in the region of 100. 100 seizures? <laughs> how long do they last for? And it's like, well, each class they last about 10 minutes. 10 minutes! <laughs> <laughs> and then they looked at me and went, Mom, why are you so calm? <laughs> I'm like... Because we do this five times a year. <laughs> um, I also track at the moment, I track everything uh, to do with gastro because she's got a gastro appointment coming. Mm -hmm. So I aspirate her stomach every morning mm -hmm. to see what I get out. And then I track um, breakfast, medicines, mm -hmm. how much water she's having with it so I get the full volume. Here is the response and it's none of all of the on all of these mm -hmm. but she can be upset or she can be hyperactive or she can be vomiting or gagging or um yeah mm -hmm. you can have all those kinds of things uh open bowel medicines water food uh what she's eating Ellen doesn't eat orally she has a feeding tube mm -hmm. but she gets a blended diet and this is a question we get a lot from medical staff is but what do you feed her mm -hmm. and we go this might sound weird, but um, food. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, yeah, she was having tacos. Mm -hmm. But I'd run out of taco shells, so I put macaroni in mm -hmm. instead. Uh, today she's having a pasta bake made with uh, pork hot dogs, cheese tortellini, tomato sauce, vegetables, mature cheddar, all baked, mm -hmm. thrown in the blender with water and some fortini compact for extra calories. Uh, Eileen's been failing to thrive her whole life. Uh, so Eileen's been vomiting her entire life, mm -hmm. excessively. She was able to breastfeed as a baby. She has brain damage on her brain stem, so they were worried that she wasn't going to have a swallow and uh, a suck and swallow reflex, but mm -hmm. she actually did. Um, but this, I think this is why she still has the moral reflex, because obviously mm. there's damage to, to the brain stem. We then went on to various kinds of food when we weaned her mm -hmm. um, and while she could swallow she could eat it was hard work and she just wasn't getting enough calories in uh, and we had we had lipids and glucose on prescription and fortini uh, so high calorie milk and we tried formula after formula after formula after formula and she tolerated nothing mm -hmm. So, yes, we could get adequate amounts of calories into her, but she kept nothing down. Eventually, we went to an NG tube, and then she was on formula, and she was vomiting. Formula, vomiting. Tried a different formula. Couldn't keep it down. Tried another formula. Couldn't keep it down. And it was changed to a PEG feeding tube. Mm -hmm. So, again, a very thin tube. Again, nothing staying down. 
changed to a Mickey button and blender diet and her life has completely changed. Mm -hmm. Now she tolerates Fortini and she tolerates milk. She didn't when she was on formulas. The, the dietitian at Stanmore Hospital is really good and really into blended diet. And one of the things that she taught me is that the gut needs different foods to work well. So if you're on the same thing all the time, you're not feeding the gut bacteria. Mm -hmm. And I think this is why the blended diet has been such a game changer. And I really think that if we humans actually could survive on nutrition pills, none of us would be eating. Mm -hmm. But we need real food and we need that variety and we need real protein for the stomach acid to work with and mm -hmm. it's it's just made an enormous difference and with the proper mickey button as well we can give eel in quite thick blends so you know you know that seasick feeling you get when your stomach has too much liquid in it mm -hmm. now she gets things that settle mm -hmm. um i think she has gastroparesis she hasn't had that diagnosis officially but that's one of the things i'll be asking for in gastro in a couple of weeks what other questions have you got so okay i think we've kind of done like medical needs um it, the others are like social emotional and financial yes okay um, cool financial it is tough having a child like Erlin. Mm -hmm. she needs a parent who can jump in at zero notice at all times so her dad is a stay-at-home parent i'm a working parent mm -hmm. and it was like that when we were married as well because he need, there, there needs to be somebody who's close by and able to just go, yep, yeah, I'm, I'm there. Mm -hmm. uh, so he's entirely dependent on benefits uh, and she gets uh, highest rate mobility cover and disability living allowance. And then I'm working, um, but if I'm not at work, I don't get paid. Mm -hmm. And Eileen's in hospital so much. And when she's in the local hospital, we swap every 24 hours. But when she's far away, like when she was in Stanmore Hospital, uh, the first hip surgery she had, I stayed in for three weeks. The second hip surgery, Dad stayed in. That was eight days. When they took the metal work out, I'll explain the hip surgeries in a moment. Mm -hmm. uh, she was in for three nights, and that was me again. Um, so it, it really, you take a hit. Mm -hmm. You take a real hit. Uh, social and emotional for Eileen. Uh, Eileen's lovely. She is so sociable, she loves noises, she loves other children, she mm -hmm. loves being the centre of attention. What I need from people is to speak to her. Yes, she's non-verbal, but she understands what you say. Mm -hmm. um, so talk to her rather than going to me, obviously if she's there. But, you know, some people just kind of come to me and they, they go, oh, so how is she feeling? Mm. Or well, you can ask her. I will answer, but you can ask her. Yeah. Um, I need people to be up close to her so that she can see them. I mm -hmm. need people to touch her hands so that she knows she's there. Um, and some people are naturals at this and really good and other people get very scared. Children are wonderful. Mm -hmm. Children have no filters. So they will just, okay, well, mommy says I need to hold your hand when I talk to you. So I'm going to do that. And I'm going to talk directly at you. And oh my God, you're smiling at me. And this is so wonderful. Mm -hmm. So young kids are brilliant. Uh, and she loves the attention. She gets super happy. Mm -hmm. Emotionally, for Eileen, she can get super frustrated, super upset, and we don't know why she is, and it's really hard to help her out a bit. She doesn't know how to stop screaming. She doesn't know how to physically relax. Even now, every evening, I sit and hold her to physically demonstrate what a relaxed body feels like mm -hmm. because she can't do it on her own. Yeah, the screaming, and it, it's, it can be so frustrating to me as a parent or, or you know, whoever's caring for her, because she, you can't reach her, and she's just so upset, mm -hmm. and you don't know how to fix it. Uh, and then I mentioned the PTSD thing, mm -hmm. um, and it is, it's a massive mental health toll on the parents. Mm -hmm. And on Alice, you know, Alice is growing up with, we've never told Alice that Alice's disabilities are life-limiting. Mm -hmm. um, but she's terrified that her sister's going to die anyway and she's terrified every time her sister goes into hospital and she really struggles with this fact that there's only one parent around when Eileen's in hospital mm -hmm. they go back and forth between me and dad and when they're at mine Alice crawls in under my skin mm -hmm. because she's not seen me for several days and she has to be that close mm -hmm. 
and then at the same time, you know, you every every bit of progress, every step forwards, it's such a celebration, mm -hmm. so wonderful. And when she's in a good mood, her smile just lights up the entire world. Mm -hmm. um, and she's a lot of fun. She's got a wicked sense of humour, that girl. <laughs> really wicked sense of humour. Mm -hmm. If I start forgetting things, she's just laughing her head off. She's like, Mommy, you're messing up again. Yes. During today, Spend some time with Ellen. Mm -hmm. Get to know her, see what she's like. Mm -hmm. um, you know, use your observations in your coursework. Yeah. Uh, Caitlin, who's working with Ellen, is amazing. She's been Ellen's carer since Ellen was two. Oh wow! Okay. Yeah, she knows her so well. Mm -hmm. um, and you'll be able to see. You, you you're gonna see seizures today, and you're gonna see her feeding and everything like that. So mm -hmm. yeah. Do. Okay, thank cool. you so much. And, and you're Swedish, you said? Yes. I just was in Sweden really recently. Were you? Where about? Um, Lund. Okay. Um, on like a choir tour thing. But, yeah. Nice. Okay, nice. Thank, thank you, you so, so much. much. <laughs> Did you make it through the whole thing? Thank you so much for still being here and having followed through this long conversation. I hope you found it informative and helpful and useful and maybe even entertaining. I don't know. If you have any questions for me, as always, pop them in the comments field and uh, I will at some point possibly read the comments and get back to you. I will, yeah, I, I'm gonna get better at that, okay? I promise, I promise. Anyway, thank you for watching and I'll see you again very, very soon. Bye.